Fake news are news that are not true, full stop. Whether Mr. Trump likes them or not, that is fake news. Fake news is not whether you like it or, or not. And I, I completely agree with, with Serge and uh, Evangeline when it comes to the need for, for fact-checking. We, we need to be professionals. Um, and I think, I'm an optimist, I think this is a golden age for, for journalism and for professional journalists. Um, so far, every time Mr. Trump tweets about fake news, your subscription rates go up. I mean, that's a good sign, right, right there. And I think that not only fact-checking, but also transparency is, is urgent. Uh, we need to tell the audience how we fact-check we need to be transparent with our methods. Uh, as someone else said this morning, I mean, journalism is a method, it's not a science. And, and we need to talk to our audiences about what we do, how we do it, why we do it. Um, we need to be crystal clear when it comes to what is established, established facts and, and what is not. Um, and we also need to be very, very clear when it comes to uh, discussing that fact-checking is not taking sides. It's not partial to point out when a politician or, or someone else uh, is spreading unverified accusations. I think also that we need to be focused and not be distracted as, as journalists. There's a risk for that right now with the constant tweeting and the constant accusations about fake news, uh, the constant provocations. Um, we need to focus on our job, focus not only on the, on the accusations but on the real issues. We need to dig into the real issues, uncover untold stories, um, uncover all the dramatic changes going on in our political landscape right now. And I think that we have a responsibility to be, to be focused. We also have reasons to be self-critical as, as professional journalism, journalists, I think. Um, in my newsroom uh, at the Swedish radio, we talk about a lot about the need to get out and talk to people. I mean, we are discussing filter bubbles here today. I think there's a risk that we as journalists are also in some kind of filter bubble in our privileged capitals in our newsrooms. We need to get out there to listen to our audiences. We need to take their everyday concerns seriously. And we need to be aware of the risk that we are in a bubble in our own perspectives. And as uh, David Levy said this morning, journalism is also narratives. We need to have multiple narratives uh, and we need to broaden our perspectives to make sure that we have diversity, diversity in our newsrooms, diversity in our narratives, uh, a multitude of voices be being heard in our media outlets. And we cannot be thin-skinned. We should not let ourselves be provoked uh, or get angry, but keep, keep cool and carry on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, but I'm not done. I have another question Great. and a follow-up. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, fake news are there. So what do you think is the impact of fake news? Whether it is on the quality of journalism, whether it's on the audience, whether it's about their media consumption? I think one, ob one obvious impact is the polarization that we are seeing. I mean, we, we see a, a polarized world politically. Uh, we, we could just look at Washington right now, where Democrats and Republicans tend to not talk to each other at all. Uh, there's certainly not a, uh, an ambience of cooperation or understanding right now in the, in the political landscape in Washington and in many of the European capitals as well. We see that in, in many of our, our countries uh, in this room. Um, and there's a risk that we in this political landscape tend to polarize also our audiences, I think, even from a media perspective. We see that in a, in a U.S. context where the the news cable networks are, are becoming more and more opinionated with Fox News as, as the conservative channel and MSNBC as the, as the more and more democratic um, party channel. Um, and that, um, 
that lack of bipartisanship or understanding, if you will, that, that polarization is a, a, is a risk not only for, uh, from political reasons, but also from, from a media perspective, uh, I think. So, so that is one impact. Um, I think also another impact is uh, an increased insecurity uh, as, a, as a consumer of news you might become more and more insecure uh, when, when you're looking through your Twitter feed or your Facebook feed. What is, what is true, what is not? Whom can I trust? And um, that insecurity is being fueled when, when even some of, of the most powerful political leaders in the world, you can insert your country of choice here, <laughs> but when some of the most powerful leaders uh, are, are spreading false accusations and false facts. Um, I also think that you don't have to be George Orwell to see that it is right now, in the end, a fight of control over truth or control over information. And it's, it's a great challenge. We, we need to step up, be professional, be transparent and be diverse.